Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for being on. Happy Election Day. Hope everyone has um, done their patriotic, patriotic duty and voted. If you haven't, I encourage you to get out and do it. Um, big win for us on Saturday over a quality uh, Kansas State team, a team that I have a lot of respect for. Well coached. Coach Kleiman and his staff do a really good job. Uh, and I appreciate all the fans. I said this after the game. Appreciate everyone who came out and supported us and look forward to getting back here in a couple weeks. And, and hopefully we'll have a good – uh, showing when we host TCU, uh, the win and and celebrating Halloween with uh, with the family made for a good Saturday. Uh, quick recap, kind of go through the the good and the bad of the game on Saturday. I thought special teams starting with the negatives first. I think we got a we got we got hit with one uh, long kickoff return. I thought overall our kickoff coverage was pretty good. I think their average starting position was on the 23, but they got out to the 49 on one of them. And uh, we can't allow that to happen. And then we got to punt the ball better. We only punted twice, which is a positive. But we got to get more hang time, give us a better opportunity to get down there. On the positive side, we made two field goals. I um, thought Casey Legg was ready when his number was called, and he stood, stepped up and, and made some kicks, especially the one in you know the 45-yarder in the second half was encouraging. Um, our punt coverage continues to be a bright spot. And I thought we, we got really good surge on the field goal that they missed. Um, defensively, I thought the negatives, really two drives. Um, a couple explosive plays there on the second drive of the game where they came down, and we ended up having a really nice goal line stand, made them kick a field goal, which was a huge um, thought momentum piece in the game. Uh, then I thought we lost – we just lost focus, uh, had undisciplined with our eyes there on the big play on the touchdown drive right before half. Uh, a lot of positives on defense. I think how we play, effort and physicality. I talked about it after the game. I stand by that. We had three takeaways. Uh, very good versus the run. And our pass defense was the best that, that we've played all year, and, and that's encouraging. Um, you know, offensively, negatives, not taking advantage of the two two turnovers. That's, that's going to be a point of emphasis. We did a better job against Tech than came back here and didn't do as good a job. And then the goal line series where we – I think we had it maybe first or second and goal on the one. We get a penalty and end up having to kick a field goal. Um, positives, I thought we controlled the clock. Uh, very good on third down. Uh, several explosive plays, big plays in the run and the pass game. And then we established a running game. We were able to run the clock, run the ball out in, in the second half. So that was encouraging. Um, talking about the award winners from, from the week, uh, Tony Fields, first of all, uh, coming off 15 tackles um, on Saturday. Uh, congrats to him. Big 12, newcomer of the week. Our in-house awards, our offensive lineman of the week, uh, Zach Frazier, uh, played center and left guard in the game, played every snap. Uh, most productive and uh, highest highest percentage graded out offensive lineman. Uh, special teams, uh, I thought we had some really good individual performances on special teams. Extra low played well, um, but the but the guy that 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 won the award was Dante Bonamico. He recovered a, a drop punt. Uh, he had a tackle and two assists on kickoff, and he starts on all four units and does a really nice job. A defensive uh, player of the week. Had a couple, I thought, guys that we talked about, Tony, already. Taki Smith has been extremely consistent for us. Um, and then Dre Miller played his best football game of the year. Had five five pass breakups. But the defense player of the week was Sean Mahone. Seven tackles, an interception, two tackles on kickoff, and then a tackle on punt. And so I thought he he played at extremely high level. I thought it was best game uh, of the year. Offensively, I thought Letty continues to be um, – Really, our most productive player offensively. Um, Bryce had a nice day going over 100 yards, but uh, the the offense player of the week chosen by the staff was Jarrett Daigie, third consecutive 300-yard uh, passing game, graded high on decision making, did a really nice job. Uh, our blue collar award goes to Mike, Michael Laughlin, starts on our punch shield, starts on field goal protection. I uh, thought he blocked really well in the run game, uh, and then was productive on a couple on a couple receptions. Um, Juice, guy that does the best job on the sidelines, J.P. Hadley. And I thought our sideline was really, really good, which has been important during these, uh, you know, low uh, attendance games. Uh, scout team players of the week, which I think these are important. Uh, these are the guys that really get get the first teamers ready to, ready, ready to play. And they're guys that I think have futures here. Um, on special teams this week, it was Devell Washington. Um, and he's a – Young young guy, a freshman in our program that continues to grow and continues to mature. He's going to be a really good player here. Um, defensively, Sean Martin was scout team player of the week. Uh, he he actually got in and started on our on our uh, punt return punt block team this week. 
Uh, but he did a nice job getting us ready for the Hubert kid at Kansas State. And then offensively, uh, offensive lineman Jaquay Hubbard, um, who did a, who had a nice week, and he's continuing to get more comfortable here. But kind of wrapping up, that was a great win. Um, and uh, and we'll move on. We'll move on to uh, – and I thought it was a three-phase win, which is important. But uh, move on to Texas, kind of uh, going to Austin this week, as you know, uh, face a Texas team that's coming off a huge overtime win over uh, a, a – Either, you know, what, regardless of whichever poll you look at, number five or number six ranked Oklahoma State, uh, extremely talented team, uh, maybe the most talented in our league, uh, that usually plays their best football at home. You know, I think if you look since uh, Coach Herman's been there, they've played really well at home. Uh, kind of preview on them. They've got a dangerous returner in Jamison. Uh, two kickoff returns for touchdowns. One of them got called back, but it's st he still took it to the house the way I look at it. And uh, three in his career, very good punt returner as well. Does a great job having a vertical mentality in the punt return game. Their punter, uh, Australian, uh, very talented. Been there for three years. Um, as good as, as as anybody in the in the country in what he does. And uh, Dicker, their their kicker there, he is he's great on kickoffs. I mean, high high percentage of touchbacks, which is a weapon. And then he's been consistent throughout his whole career, really kicking field goals. Offensively, they're spread spread uh, up tempo, one of the top offenses in in the Big Twelve and really overall in the country. Um, they're led by their quarterback, man. Ellinger is a is a winner. I love to watch him play. I love to watch him compete. Um, and I think they they take on his demeanor when they're playing well. Um, he's definitely their leader, and he's a dual threat. And I think he's really improved as a passer, uh, deep and talented at wide out. Um, that's it's, it's probably going to be our biggest challenge that we've had this year at that position. And their O-line is, is really solid. They're big. They're long. Uh, they do a good job what they ask them to do. Um, and, they, and they've and they got a deep um, backfield there. I know one of them may be out, but they're, they're kind of by committee. And they've got three really, really talented guys back there. Uh, defensively, four-down system. Uh, they created, they've created uh, takeaways and negative plays really in every game, uh, but, but definitely against Oklahoma State and, you know, the, the the negative plays they created against one of the better teams in the country that was impressive. I think it I think it starts with with 46 Osa. I think he's special, probably as good as a defender as there is in our league. Um, his stats are off the charts, but then he he really jumps out. Uh, he's got great ball get off. He's long. Um, he he's a uh, he's an early round draft pick for sure, and um, he's disruptive. And we got to know where he's at. Um, they're huge on the interior of their defensive line. You know as big as we're going to face all year. And then Stearns, who's, who's been there, it seems like, for a long time. He's, he's, I think he's special in the back end. And a lot of team speed. That's the, that's the thing. You always know that when you play ta uh, Texas. If you look at you know, either recruiting rankings and, and the guys they've been able to recruit, you know, there's a lot of team speed there. So, huge challenge for our team this week. We're looking forward to, to putting together uh, some consistency. That's, that's our goal. And uh, with that, I'll open up to questions. Go ahead, Greg Hunter. So, Neil, you talked about explosive plays and the improvement in that area after Kansas State. Is that something that's just organic, or is it something you can generate through calls? How, how, how do explosive plays come about? Both. You both. A lot of them, you know, if you look at them, Greg, like our, guy, our explosive plays, there was a couple that we were able to maybe schematically have a – have a say in, but a lot of them are just winning one on ones. Like, for instance, if you look at Bryce, it was a third down. Um, we we liked that call on third down, um, but he won. It was man to man. He won. Daggy made a great throw, caught him in stride, and then he was able to, you know, he's got good long speed and he was able to run away from a couple people. Um, but I think it's a mixture. It's a lot of times it's winning one on ones. Sometimes schematically, you see some things you can take care, uh, take advantage of. Um, but I would say more oftentimes than not, it's 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 individual players winning one-on-one -on -one matchups. Ethan Buck. Hey, Coach. Um, this isn't really football related, but did you get a chance to speak with your guys about the importance of today's election and the impact of voting? And what did you tell them? Yeah, we spent a lot of time on it, actually, uh, going back to the summer and, and, and through some of the social uh, justice things that we were doing. We've got a, a really an inclusion committee within our program uh, that every Tuesday for about um, six or eight weeks there in a row we talked and voting was the was the topic on a couple different times. Not only talking about the importance of voting, talking about the history of voting, 
um, throughout our really our country's time, but then also educating them on the local ballot and um, and not just the presidential election, but other other pivotal um, pivotal elections that are, that were happening here in in our state and in Mon County. Mike Kizaza. Hey, how's it going? Mike, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I have a question for you about your um, the way you guys are racking up plays on offense without a ton of tempo. A little bit last week, but really not, you know, warp speed stuff. And then the difference between your plays and the opponent's plays is pretty significant. Um, I don't know if that's any type of goal, but it seems like a formula that maybe matches with the way you're wanting to play. Is that accurate enough? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's – it's good research by you too. Um, we've been able to get a lot of first downs, um, and we've been good on defense on third down. I think that's the kind of formula we have. We have. There's been a couple games where we really stepped on the the gas as far as pushing the tempo, but we haven't done that consistently. Um, so I think that's what it is: made first downs and being able to get off the field defensively, um, and running the football is a, a key to that as well. John Antonic. Sam Ellinger got a huge sample size of him, but um, he's had obviously a lot of success. Is he more dangerous when he gets out of the pocket with his feet? You know, I think both. Uh, early in his career, I think, John, that's probably a fair assessment. I don't think so anymore. Um, I think he's he's get, he's gotten where he's really comfortable in the pocket. Um, and he gets the ball out on time. His accuracy has really improved. Um, he is a capable runner uh, without without question, and they do and they will run him. And he does a good job when plays break down. But you know, I think he's he's plenty efficient in the pocket, too. Kirk Bowles. Hey, Neil. Uh, I was curious, with you developing the running game so much better this year than last year and playing good defense, are, are y'all going to kind of be the square peg in the round hole in the – Big 12, and have you been officially kicked out of the Air Raid Club yet? <laughs> nah. If you look at it, I think a lot of people uh, – we still threw the – I mean, we've thrown 300 yards three weeks. You know what I mean? And our passing our passing's not bad. I think we're in top maybe 20, 25 in the country. Um, no, nah, I think if you look um, throughout, everybody's kind of out of that tree or our kind of roots go back to the Air Raid. I think most people are have, have gone – and, and really try to establish a run game and for for if not another reason just to give your defense a fighting chance through spring ball and, and during preseason camp and then during the season um, and that's probably as big a reason why you know going back to Troy that we started doing that is for our defense as much as our offense um, now I think I think the league's changed a little bit I th and I think everything kind of evolves we've talked about this Kirk with with our beat people here at West Virginia a lot about the big 12 and you know, there's, you know, there's been a lot of turnover at the head coaching position throughout, throughout the league. Um, and, um, and the recruiting has really improved in my opinion. And there's a lot of really good defensive minds here. You know, the big 12 was such an innovative offensive uh, conference for a long time. And it still is. There's some of the best offensive minds in college football. We'll go against one in, in Yardlich this week. I mean, and there's still there's still that piece here in the Big 12, but now I think you're seeing a lot of innovation uh, on the defensive side, and I think that only continued to improve in the players. You know, talking about Osa, you know, if you look at Darius Steele's for us, you know, those are those are major talents that impose their will on a game, and so I don't think that that we're that much different than a lot of a lot of people in our league. Honestly, that if you look at uh, Kansas State, they've played really good defense. Iowa State's played really good defense. You know, Texas um, has played really good defenses, at, at re really good defense at times this this year. You know, they're they play they've already played some of the top offenses, so I think their numbers are a little bit different because of who they played. Um, but there's you know TCU, Gary Patterson is as good a play caller as there is in the country, and so and those are just I'm just going off the top of my head, but I think there's some really good quality defense being played across the board here. Skylar Callahan. Hey, Neil, one guy that seemed to have really improved since last year is uh, Micah Laughlin, both receiving and, and really blocking too. Just kind of talk about what he has meant to this offense and where do you see him 
uh, kind of learning that tight end position since he played a lot of receiver in high school? Well, I think he's – this is his first year where he's actually had a fighting chance, you know. he We talked about him. You know, he's 190 pounds. When he signed, he came here towards ACL's first first practice, the way I understand it, of his freshman fall camp. So, he has to redshirt. Um, comes back last year and kind of got forced into action and uh, was really kind of fighting an uphill battle all year. And then now he's at a he's at a position with his body weight and strength where – he can compete week in and week out, and he's always had great ball skills. He's always had he's always been a guy that's good after the catch. So he continues to do that, and now he's doing a really good job in 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 the run game and the pass protection aspects. And not only him, T.J. Banks. T.J. Banks has been has given us quality snaps all year as well. Michael Sussman. Um, Coach, after some really close games over the last decade or so between West Virginia and Texas. Texas has kind of become somewhat of an adopted rival in the Big 12. Have you sensed a little extra juice in the building this week, and is there anything extra that you do to get your guys motivated this week? Yeah, I think that – I mean, we're we're excited to play Texas. Um, I, I don't necessarily believe it's a rivalry game. You know, I think our natural rivalries are kind of in our geographic footprint. I don't, I don't think Texas is looking at West Virginia as a rivalry. Um, it's a Big 12 conference game, which means it's important. And the way I look at it in football, it's different. You know, baseball, you play a lot of games. You know, basketball, you play a lot of games. Football, you usually play 12, maybe 13, 14, 15 at the most. This year we're playing 10. And uh, you better be ready to go every game, you know. And that's kind of the way we look at it. Um, Is there going to be extra juice because we're playing Texas? Not my opinion, honestly. I mean, they're just – they're the next team. And we respect them. I got a ton of respect for – for Texas, the history of that program. Um, I think it's a great experience for our guys to go to Austin and, and, and play in that stadium that has so much tradition. Um, but I don't I don't think it's a, a rivalry game. And and I could be wrong. I don't I don't think Texas probably looks at it as that either. It's just a Big Twelve conference game that's that is vitally important for both teams who are who are, you know, trying to stay in the fight to get to Dallas. Cody Nesper, go ahead. Hey, Neil, I was just wondering if um, there was any sort of injury updates. Uh, obviously, Evan announced he's out for the rest of the year. Um, I think Chase left the game on Saturday, and then I don't think Vandarius played again. Yeah, Chase left for like uh, – <coughs> sorry, water went down. I promise you, all my tests are negative, so <coughs> I feel like i got to say that every time I cough. But um, So, Chase, uh, he just went down for one play. He uh, – maybe two, but he played – He's he's a little a little sore just because most offensive linemen are, but he's uh he's fine. He'll be ready to go this week. Um, Van Darius is he wasn't able to practice uh, at full speed last week, so he couldn't play. I think it's too early in the week to decide on him for this week. Um, the guys playing his in his position are playing well. Tom Cree and Bartlett, um, and then Evan. Unfortunately, he's out for the year. Uh, he'll have surgery next week. We'll take these last two questions. Go ahead, Mike. All right, I have two, Neil. One's another stat one that's kind of strange, but Tony's tackle total is really good, but it's about two to one in assist to solo tackles. I don't know what that says about him and the way you guys are flying around on defense. And then secondly, um, is there a danger almost in getting the lead on Ellinger and the way he shifts into how he plays offense and almost freelances within the script a little bit? Yeah, they've been a group that plays really, really well from behind. And – I think that just speaks to his – he's calm. You think about how many games he's played uh, throughout his career, how many close games have came down to the wire. I mean, just think about it. I mean, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, they go into overtime. And um, he's played his best in the fourth quarter. I guess they've had three overtime games. I'm sorry, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and uh, Oklahoma State. And he's really um, brought them back in the fourth quarter. And I, I just think, first of all, he's talented. Um I don't, I don't know him other than meeting him a couple times. He uh, He's a guy that just comes off to me as a winner. Um, and he's got some mental toughness about him. I think he's got uh, some charisma, leadership, or guys following him. And when you have that type of personality combined with, with the talent he has, guys are going to follow him. And uh, he's been able to step up in those crunch, crunch uh, time moments and make plays. Um, so that's that's kind of the way I see it. As far as the the solo and assisted tackles, 
I really don't, probably don't have a good answer for you. Um, I know this. We put a huge emphasis on running to the football and playing with, with great effort, and I think we're doing that for the most part. And so that, that may be a reason behind some of the assists. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I don't have probably a, a great answer on that. Back to Greg. Neil, you, you mentioned injuries earlier. Your tackle situation in terms of depth, I know John Hughes didn't play, you know, what, three quarters mm -hmm. because of injury. Junior sounds like he's out. You got a, a walk on listed in your two deep at tackle. So what's your depth situation at, at tackle now? Yeah, so uh, John left uh, the game. It's early. Uh, John Hughes left the game early in the first quarter. Uh, he practiced yesterday. Uh, I think he'll be available for the game. Bryson Mays finished, did a good job. Um, Nick Malone is – he's in our two deep and probably would have been regardless if anybody left or not. Uh, he's done a nice job. He continues to gain weight and gain strength. And um, But we don't. I mean, we've talked about this. We're, our, our depth on the offensive line is is not what it – not what we need it to be, not what we want it to be. I think we've got some guys in our program that are making making significant progress, um, and we've got guys committed to us. You know, and it's a it's a process. You know, the offensive line is the hardest thing when you're when you're building a program. It's the hardest position to recruit. I say that all the time, and I mean it. And uh, you know, I think we're probably two years away from from depth wise where we want it to be. I do think that we're much improved. Um, overall, we don't have somebody that's playing at the level of, of McKibbitts last year individually, but I think as a whole, uh, that unit is, is much improved, and that's a credit to the guy, to the work that they've done. That's a credit to, to Chase Barrett really being um, a good leader up front, and then, and then Matt Moore uh, doing a nice job of, of really teaching and, and coaching that group. 